Okay, so exercise three now, uh, we're looking at simplifying some thirds. So we've got root 27 first of all. So we're always trying to split these up into a prime number um, times another number, and then we can square, or a prime number and a square number even better. Um, but you can do it in steps if you do get stuck. So I know 27 is the same as 3 times 9. So I can write 3 times 9 there instead of 27. We can then split this up into root 3 times root 9. And then because 9 is a square number, the square root of 9 is 3. So we can write this one out as 3 root 3. All right, next one, square root of 48. So sometimes you might not spot um, a prime number and a square number straight away, so we could easily split this one up into uh, 4 times 12. Uh, we know if the root of 4 is 2, so we could bring that outside and say it's 2 root 12. But this still isn't simplified enough because 12 isn't prime. So 12 I can then further split up into 3 and 4, so we could say it's 2 root 3 times 4 which is the same as 2 root 3 times root 4. We know root 4, again, is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So we end up with 4 root 3 for this one. You might start, if you started off and said, well, 48 is 3 times 16, that's a quicker way of doing this one. Um, but feel free to break it up in stages if you feel like you need to. Question 3, uh, so we've got root 12 over 2. So we're going to split up root 12 again into 4 times 3. So um, 4 times 3 over 2. And we can split that further up into root 4 times root 3 over 2. We know root 4 is 2, so we get 2 root 3 over 2. Those 2's are going to cancel, so the whole thing becomes the square root of 3. Right, question four. So we've got root 20 minus 3 root 45. So this time we need to split up both of these thirds separately and then try and simplify them. So root 20, I know we could write out as 4 times 5. Then minus 3 lots of 45. Well, I know that 9 times 5 is 45, so we'll put 9 times 5 in there. We can then split this up, so root 4 I know is 2, so we get 2 root 5 minus 3 lots of, well, root 9 is 3, so we can get 3 times 3 root 5. So in other words, this becomes 2 root 5 minus 9 root 5. 2 lots of something, take 9 lots of something, is going to give us minus 7 root 5 to end of there. Cool. Right, next one. Similar kind of thing. So we've got root 200 plus root 18 minus 2 root 50. So we've actually got three different thirds that we've got split up this time. So it might take a little bit longer. Uh, root 200, um, ooh, easiest way to do that one. Uh, we can split that up into 4 times 50. There's a much easier way to do that, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So don't worry if you have to do it in a few time, a few terms. Uh, this one can split up into two times nine, and then two lots of root fifty. We could say is twenty-five times two. So it's looking like this is all going to end up in root twos. So we can split this one up further, and say well, the four we can square root and bring it out, so we get two root fifty plus three root two. Uh, 25, root 25 is 5, so we can get minus 10 root 2. Notice how these, oops, said the right thing, wrote the wrong thing. So 10 root 2 there. So notice how we've got two sets of root 2, so I think this one is going to need splitting up into another root 2 as well. So what factors could we get from 50? Well, we've got 5 and 10, but neither of those are square or prime. Um, we could also look at... 2 times 25, which has got a square number and prime, so I think that's what we're going to go for. So 2 lots of 25 times 2, and then the rest of it. Now this, we can say the root of 25 is 5, so we get 2 times 5, which is 10 root 2, plus 3 root 2, 
oops, minus 10 root 2. The 10 root 2s there are going to cancel, leaving us with 3 root 2. All right, so uh, three more questions on thirds, which are all about rationalizing the denominator. So if you're not sure on the rules of these, again, look through the workbook. Uh, question six, then, we want to rationalize two over root three. So to rationalize something like this, you're just going to times the equation by root three over root three. You've got to make sure the fraction that you're timesing by is always one. So it always has to be the same on top and on bottom, because otherwise you're completely changing the question. So if we times this out, 2 times root 3 gives us 2 root 3. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. Okay, question 7. Trying to rationalise 1 plus root 2. So to rationalise a fraction like this, you want to times by the, if you like, the negative version of what's on the denominator. So we're going to times it by 1, uh, 1 minus root 2 over 1 minus root 2. Again, make sure same thing on the top and on the bottom. So 1 times this, we get 1 minus root 2 on top. On the bottom, we're going to times this out as if it's a quadratic. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus root 2 is minus root 2. 1 times plus root... Oh, let's do this this way. 1 times plus root 2 is plus root 2. And the last bit, root 2 times root 2 is or minus 2 there. So these two terms are going to cancel out. So we end up with 1 minus 2 on the bottom, which is going to be a minus 1. So 1 minus root 2 over minus 1, which if you wanted to make it a bit neater, we could times through by minus 1 and get root 2 take 1 over 1, which is root 2 minus 1. OK, last one, question 8. got 3 over 4 minus root 2. So to rationalise this, we're going to times through by 4 plus root 2 over 4 plus root 2. And again, we've got to be careful with how we times it out. So on the top, 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times root 2 is 3 root 2. On the bottom, 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times plus root 2 is plus 4 root 2. 4 times minus root 2 is minus 4 root 2. And root 2 times minus root 2 is going to be minus 2. So same as last time, these two middle terms are going to cancel out. We're going to get 16 take 2 is 14. So we get 12 plus 3 root 2 over 14.